Hannah the Hippo, written by Linda Schwartz, illustrated by Beverly Armstrong. Hannah the Hippo didn't like her reflection. What she had in mind was total perfection. If only I weren't so broad in the hips. And why was I stuck with these terrible lips? These thoughts and others ran through Hannah's head as she peered in the mirror, preparing for bed. When I think about beauty and how much I see, I wonder why more wasn't given to me. The very next day, Hannah rode into town where she worked as a vet, the best one around. Hannah took care of creatures with all kinds of ills. She examined and prodded and sometimes gave pills. She tended to mumps, chicken pox, and the flu. For Hannah was gentle and listened well, too. When Edna the elephant came to Hannah's room, the vet saw sad eyes and a face full of gloom. Just look at my hide, all wrinkled and saggy. No other creature has skin quite so baggy. Perhaps you are right, agreed Hannah the vet. But how would you like to make a small bet that no other creature who lives on the land has a trunk for a nose so useful and grand? Plus, everyone knows your memory's the best and your sense of humor outshines all the rest. So Edna left with a feeling of pride, no longer concerned about her wrinkly hide. Next came Jerome, looking forlorn and sad. It's my height, I'm too tall, and it sure makes me mad. Perhaps you are right, agreed Hannah the vet. But how would you like to make a small bet that no other creature who lives on the land has a neck so elegant, graceful, and grand? Oh, why don't you realize how lucky you are? You can peer over crowds. You can spot things afar. When you view a parade, you can actually see. With your height, you can reach any leaf on a tree. In addition to that, your friendship is true. Whenever you're needed, you always come through. Jerome left the office as proud as could be, knowing no other mammal was lofty as he. Next to come into the office that day was Aroma the skunk, who said with dismay, Nobody loves me. That's what I think. Even my friends tell me I stink. Perhaps you are right, agreed Hannah the vet. But how would you like to make a small bet that no other creature who lives on the land has a stripe so distinctive, striking, and grand? Your black and white pattern is truly the best. Your beautiful coat stands out from the rest. And along with that, you're honest and sweet. You're loving and loyal, and that's hard to beat. Then Aroma strolled out, feeling quite well, no longer obsessed with her unpleasant smell. After Hannah had seen all her patients that day, she took the bus home and thought on her way, I guess that it isn't only just me who's not as perfect as I'd like to be. For if I surveyed a large group of creatures, I'd find they'd all like to get rid of some features, like a body too heavy or eyes beady and small, or a nose that's too big, or legs skinny and tall. Total perfection is out of the picture. Like everyone else, I'm really a mixture. But I'm one of a kind. I'm proud to be me. Who I am matters, not what others see. As a hippo, I'm worthy, gentle, and fair. If I'm not a beauty, I really don't care. I like who I am. My heart's filled with pride. 
I've learned what's important is what is inside. The end. Thanks for listening, everyone. If you enjoyed this, please don't forget to like and subscribe to Katie's Bookshelf Classroom. Thanks, guys. Bye.